Richard Maidley, one of the best known faces on daytime television, has ditched the comfort of the studio sofa which he shared with his wife Judy for more than two decades. Now in his mid-fifties, he's at a turning point in his life. I think both Judy and I are very much over a watershed now. Um, I do feel in a very, very new place in, in, in my life, you know, professionally and personally. We spent all those years presenting together, and we're never going to do that again. And that's an absolutely clear decision. Uh, it's 20 past eight, more travel from Lynn. And having been off that particular hamster wheel for about two years, I do find myself, because I've got the time, uh, wondering why I am the way I am. Richard was born in Romford, Essex in 1956, the son of an English father and Canadian mother. I know a lot about my father's side of the family back to the latter stages of the, of the Victorian era, the 19th century. But my knowledge of my mother's family and her background is pretty patchy. Mum's Canadian. But as far as how the family got to Canada, I don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to discover something about that, that side of the family, because I know so little about it. This used to be my... Uh, it used to be my school train. Um, we used to get the train from, from Romford into Stratford and then get the tube to, to Mile End and walk to my East End Grammar School. It hasn't changed a bit, the backs of the houses. I mean, there's almost nothing changed at all. Extraordinary. In the early 1950s, Richard's father, Christopher, went to Canada in search of work where he met Mary Clare, Richard's mother. After marrying, they moved back to Essex, where Richard was born and grew up. I was very lucky. I mean, looking at these pictures from, from all these years ago, I, I had a, such a happy childhood. I mean, that, that's, that's my birthday. I'm eight. Um, that's my sister Liz. That's Mum in a 60s dress. Um, and we're in Epping Forest, and I could take you to that, that clearing today. I know exactly where it is. Richard is on his way to Norfolk, where his mother now lives. His father died in 1977. Come on, Mum, it's pouring down. <laughs> it's horrible. How are you? OK. <laughs> Have you got any pictures of your parents? I, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of them There together. is a picture of my father and mother, and that must have been soon after they were married. She's got a sweet face, hasn't she? Your mother. She was beautiful. Yeah. How did your parents meet? I don't know that story. My father had emigrated from Scotland, and he went straight to uh, Quebec. Mm -hmm. And he went into northern Quebec, where he became a... Uh, uh, oh, Chop down trees. A logger. A, a logger. And then he decided, I want to see the rest of Canada. So in Canada, they have gangs of men or women mm. who collect the strawberries, the fruit, and they go further and further west as mm. they go, till finally they get to the wheat country. I see. So, it's, so they kind of follow the seasons as, yes, as the different follow, crops yeah. and fruits yes. mature. And that, that takes them sort of inexorably west. Yes, yes. So he ended up in the west. Yeah, he ended up in Saskatchewan. And my mother was looking after the farm. So this is your mum, just a slip of a girl, running this huge farm all by herself and basically handling these, these well, not quite cowboys, but, uh, but rowdy yes. farm workers. Oh, but they weren't rowdy, not with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and they met, and it was instant. They were, fell in love with each other. Richard's mother, Mary Clare, was born in 1932, during the time of the Great Depression. When she was growing up, the province of Saskatchewan was the agricultural heartland of Canada. Here, her parents, Hector and Barbara, had run the family's 1,800-acre wheat farm. And here is their wedding certificate. <laughs> what year would this be? This... Uh, 1926. 1926, and she was 19 then. Hector McEwen, trained farmer. profession farmer, and there's your mother's name, Barbara Violet Bailey. Your mother's occupation is, 
he's, he's put down as living at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine career. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Her father was Harris A. Bailey. Was was Horace, please, Horace, Horace. Bailey. We've got the maiden name of your grandmother, uh, Mary Murdoch. She was Mary Alvinia. 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 She was born in Nova Scotia. That is the way she looked when she disapproved. That is one heck of a, <laughs> one heck of a disapproving <laughs> expression. <laughs> have you got any other pictures of her? Was no. she not looking quite so stern? No. Yes, I have. Now, that's what she is <laughs> like normally. Like but you were very close to your grandmother, Very you? close, very hmm. close indeed. Uh, as I was going to have dates, you know, when I was around 14, 15, hmm. my grandmother uh, would always... She, she had a rocking chair and the rock... The, the bedroom window looked out on the street where I would come in. And she sat there until I came in and then she slipped into bed. And if you were late, did she give you one of those looks? No, she didn't. <laughs> she never did. She never did. I could do no wrong. But I'm sorry to say that my grandmother is the furthest back that I can go. Well, that's, that's up to me to see yes. if I can crack that. That's, that's Good my luck. job. To trace his Canadian roots further, Richard has to start with his mother's grandmother, Mary Alvinia Murdoch, who he knows was born in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. We'll do Mary A. Murdoch. There she is. Uh, this is from the 1871 Canadian Census. Mary A. Murdoch. Uh, birth about, they're not sure, 1868 in Nova Scotia. Let's just view the images and see if there's any more in here. Um, there she is, Mary A. And she was three at the time. Uh, there's Murdoch John. That would have been her father, who's uh, 43. And John's type of work, he was a farmer. Another Canadian farmer. So I guess we need to type him in now. Right, we've got the register of deaths here from Nova Scotia. Uh, name of deceased, John Murdoch. Date of death, May the 14th, 1912. The address that he was listed at last was uh, South Street, Bridgetown. Uh, his occupation is given as a gentleman, and he is, of course, married. So we found him. There is a slight discrepancy here, though. I mean, here he's, he's listed as a gentleman, whatever that means. Um, in the earlier documents, he was a farmer. So something must have happened. So, Nova Scotia. A pretty cold wind swept place, I would have thought. Richard has discovered that his connection to Canada goes back at least four generations to his great-great-grandfather, John Murdoch. 